Hi, welcome to Introduction to Textile Design. I'm Jennifer Angus, one of your two instructors for this course. Please feel free to call me Jenny. Everybody does. Here I am. Yep, I really do have blue hair. But besides that, look at this fabulous pattern in the background from when I was in Morocco at winter break. And then it just so happens that I have a pattern on the top I'm wearing. So what's so great about pattern? Well, it's really inherent to cloth. It doesn't matter if it's one color, if it's woven or it's knit, it's going to have a pattern, a repeating pattern. And of course, when we look at a printed textiles, we see this visual dynamism that happens with pattern. And that is really one of my passions that I'm really looking forward to sharing with you this semester when we meet both in person and online. Now, if I had asked you, what's a pattern on a textile that has some meaning, you might have thought of this, the tartan, the Scottish tartan, which designates clans or families. This just happens to be the Angus tartan. But a lot of what I've learned about pattern comes from my research in northern Thailand, the area known as the Golden Triangle, where the borders of three countries meet up, Thailand, Laos, and Myanmar. And these are really the foothills of the Himalayas, where there are many different minority people. These women that we're, we see here are from the Karen tribe. How do I know that? Because of their dress. I actually know that they're married women too. Again, because of their dress. If they were unmarried, they would be wearing white dresses with red stripes. So that's all kind of cool, but let's look at the pattern on their blouse. I can tell the village that they come from because of that pattern. So they don't need a shirt that says Madison, Wisconsin, or wherever, in this case, Chiang Mai, Thailand, to let us know where they come from. It's told through the pattern. Pretty cool, eh? By the way, I'm from Canada. Even cooler is this. What we're looking at is a maternity blouse. How do I know it is? Because of these two special rectangles. We see the one that's sort of net or mesh-like. That's referring to the fetus still forming in the womb. And then we have that one rectangle to the left that's different than all the others. And that refers to this unique individual that's going to be born into the world. So really, pattern doesn't just tell us something. It has the potential of having poetry. And that's what I'm hoping that all of you will learn and hopefully produce in your own work. Another pattern that has meaning to us instantly is camouflage, of course, military associations. Here we see it on a uniform. But here's a case of a pattern that can be put on a shelter. And we tend to think about that, a scale of patterns. And this is totally crazy. This is called Dazzle Camel. An artist, Norman Wilkinson, in World War I said, this is going to be the exact opposite. And it's a system of stripes and jagged lines that were later called Dazzle Camel. And Picasso would take credit in the end and say this was a cubist idea. So this is just the start of some of the things we're going to be talking about in Intro to Textile Design. A little bit more about myself. I am known as the insect lady. Why is that? Well, here's an exhibition that I did at the Smithsonian, the Renwick Gallery. And those walls that you see here, first off, that pattern is made up of insects. Second, that color, that red color, is an insect dye called cochineal. And we are going to be using that this semester. We're going to be doing some natural dyes. So here's a blanket that I dyed, as well as silk cocoons with the cochineal. Red has always been a difficult color to get. And this little insect, it really is the size of a bead. So you see it on the right-hand side in the basket and then being cultivated. I often say world's most boring insect. They don't run around, they don't do anything. But look at this beautiful color that comes depending on the alkali of our dye bath reds, oranges, purples. It's magic. Get excited, folks. 
Look at this. Everyone always asks me, how did I get interested in insects? Those things that look like long green fingernails, those are the hard outside wings of beetles, known as elytra. And really, these are like the sequins of the natural world. So again, from the Karen tribe in northern Thailand, using what's in the backyard to beautify, embellish this textile. And one more thing about dyeing, we're going to be doing some indigo dyeing, world's most popular dye. One of the things I get to do often in winter break is go to Ecuador, and I've done a lot of really fun dye workshops. We're going to be meeting outside in the beginning of the semester and dyeing on the rooftop garden in Sohi. I'm really looking forward to meeting you all very soon.